Hey everyone, what's up? It's Young Crow here. Hey, hey, Billy. Welcome to the literally most ADHD video I think I've ever made in my life. Uh, yeah. Let's just say you probably don't want to watch it. I know what am I saying? Actually, no, it's, that's not that's not something you want to say to your viewers. Whatever, watch it. Anyways, uh, just a heads up. Yes, this is a tutorial series. Uh, this is targeted. Well, it's not targeted towards anybody. I was just really tired when I made it, and therefore. Yeah, it's really good. Anyways, enjoy. Hey everyone, what's up? It's the Bro here. Alrighty then. Welcome to the JavaScript or RPG Maker MZ plugin tutorial series. Now, uh, I have been making the excuse of, you know, not doing this because I didn't know how to make it good or whatever, or make it like professional, but at the same time, that's not what I'm about. That's not what you guys are here for. You guys are like literally here to just watch some code stuff happen, so. Let's do it. Now, this will be a very slightly unprofessional, uh, if you can, you know, at best. If you can what? What the heck was I just about to say? Anyway, yeah. So, if you're here looking for, like, the absolute details of everything, uh, you're probably going to get extremely annoyed, unsubscribe, or try and, like, ban me from YouTube in some way, shape, or form. Because I'm not going to go into full detail. I am literally going to do the things that you need to get done. What? Like, I'm literally going to show you what needs to be done. And uh, if you want to look more into it, then you can, you know, always go to Google or something. Uh, but I will be explaining what things are, but just not like in the fullest of detail. So that aside, you're going to need Visual Studio Code. There is a link in the description for said program. You want to check it out very amazing piece of software some people say other software is better but you know i mean to each their own you know people can have their opinions even if they're wrong so what you want to do after you get visual studio code and install it you're going to click the little folder thing over the little explorer or file thing over here and there's going to be a button that says open folder you're going to open your folder you're going to open your rpg maker mz project folder in my case uh it is the MZ code folder and you'll have all these files here you'll have like audio CSS data and all that jazz you don't need those those are dookie we're not gonna we're not gonna be touching those so you want to open up the JS section open up the plugin section right click it and then click on new file and we're gonna call it thing.js now by uh, by default automatically you will be introduced to a blank thing with nothing on it. This is intended. So if you go to your project and you go to here, you can see that we now we have thing as a plugin. We're just gonna go ahead and add that. Now, the very first thing you always want to do when making a plugin is give it an identity. And how you do that, you do for two for okay, forward slash two stars. And then for each new line, you're going to want to add another star like so. And you're going to want to end it with a star and then a forward slash. That's not all though. This right here is called JS doc. And we're, I'll be going over that in a little bit. But for now, at the very first, at the top one, you're going to add a space and then another slash and then another star and then a colon. Sounds like a lot, I know, but trust me, it's not as much as it might sound. This allows you to hide, like syntax highlight all your stuff, and that's the only reason we do it this way. So what you're going to want to do, you're going to do at target mz in capital letters. We're going to give it an author, so author my name, I don't know, whatever your name is. And now, I'm going to go here. I was going to say, I, I was like going to say I was wrong, but no, it's right here. Uh, my name is right here in the author. So we're going to give it a plugin description by doing at plugin desk, little at symbol, and yeah. Anyway, if you don't want to follow along or if you don't want to type along at the same time and you just want to watch the video, then you can check out the description for all the code if you want to try and understand it yourself. Or, you know, try to memorize what you see in the video and then just play around with editing the code. And then, yeah. That's a good way to learn too, I guess. Use your own. It's a fun way. A lot funner than watching some boring video, I don't know. Alright, so plugin description. Before our ADHD goes mad. Hold on, I have an emoji thing. Hold on. 
Oh, dude, that's italic. I didn't even know you can have italic emojis. What? But yeah, so plugin description or at plugin desk. <laughs> it's actually the emotions and, and not the um. It's not like a little text thing. Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't know you can have little emoticons in the uh, plugin description. Anyway, this is your plugin description. My first plugin. And so yeah, whenever you save it, reload it, you'll see my first plugin. Yay! Yay. Huh, what the heck is the other thing here, though? What is this? I don't even know what this is. Well, we're gonna ignore that. <laughs> I'm so... I'm so... Crash an old man. Uh, uh, okay, now. Come on, decide, Craig. Okay, so this is the help section. The help section has a very... weird way of uh, handling things. So it, it doesn't automatically word wrap so this is a long message if I like spam this hold on. if I like if I spam this it's gonna keep on going until it goes to the right so at some point when you're writing your help section remember that you're gonna need to do multiple lines and yeah because it's not gonna do a new line for you but this also leaves uh, room for stylish stuff if you wanted to do some ASCII art all right, so the the intro part out of the way, we have given our plugin an identity, right? So what we're gonna create next is called an IIFE. It's a little bit iffy. Okay, stop. No, that's stupid. That wasn't even funny. What? Anyway, an IIFE basically stands for immediately invoked function execution. 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 Essentially what it does is it wraps all of your code and it makes it not editable, editable, not editable from an external source. So nobody can like hijack your functions and all that jazz. Uh, but um, it also allows you to use variable names that other plugins may use but without interfering. Too long didn't read, we use IIFEs. They're, they're needed, basically. They will save your life, they will save you headaches. Unless you're trying to like access a certain feature from like another external script, but we'll get into that later. But if you're already that good, then you already know. Well, actually, I don't know. Oh, whatever. So an IIFE can be started by doing parentheses like so. Two more parentheses in those parentheses. It looks like a spread butthole. Stop. <laughs> so we're gonna do a space equal sign. The was that less than or greater than greater than less than. Whatever the right arrow pointy thing, and then we're gonna do a curly brace. And then, yeah, so it should look exactly like this. I don't know how else to describe it. How, how else would you describe this? Uh, opening parenthesis, opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis, equal sign, arrow thingy, curly brace, closing parenthesis. And then we're going to finish it off with two more parentheses and semicolon. This is parenthesis madness. Oh, and we're also going to put a semicolon before. This is because, like, if you do decide to add something on top, like const lol equals 50, and you forget to put a semicolon here, and yeah, this will automatically fix that for you. So, on a more, uh, kind of serious note real quick, the little equal sign and the greater than less than sign, this is what's called an arrow function. It's effectively the same thing as making a regular function, Except there are some minor differences, which I will go over those if that's needed and a little bit later. But there are two ways of making a function. There is function my thing, which sounds a little bit dirty, but oops, that was incorrect. Right there. You can either do function my thing or you can do my thing equals arrow function. They um, There are some differences, but for the most part, Unless you need to use function for said specific reason, which I'll be going over later, like I said, uh, if it comes to that, then you're better off just using an arrow function. Yeah, for now, just stick with arrow functions. Uh, if you run into an error or error of some kind, then just switch it to a regular function. Now that out of the way, get back to the dankness here. We're gonna be going over classes. So that was just the intro, by the way. That was just the intro. This is like the most basic need to know stuff. Uh, now that you have all this out of the way, if you haven't left the video already, we're going to do classes. So what is a class? A class is uh, basically a thing that holds things, if you will. 
No. So basically, a class is what's called a constructor. Uh, and a constructor is a sort of object that allows you to copy all the contents within into another value or variable. So effectively, it's an object that has shape to it, if you will. So, for test purposes, we are going to create a class called thing. Why not? Class thing. Now, it is important to note, uh, on a serious note here, capital letters are critical. Do not, like, name class thing with a capital T and then try to call it later with a lowercase t because that is not going to work. All the capital letters need to be exactly how you define them here. Now, that out of the way. Constructor. So the constructor is basically the function that gets called the moment that this thing is created. This is where um, a lot of our initializing, well, all of our initializing rather, is going to go. So we're going to give it a value. We're going to give thing the value of banana. So this dot banana. I almost, I almost spelled banana na. Banana na na na. And we're going to give it like a number, so 50. What's with me and 50, by the way? I said 50 earlier. And then we're going to give it another value called this dot sour equals and it's gonna be a string yes yes and we're gonna create a little function inside of the class um, to basically output these little two values so ain't nobody got time for no hello world what you talking about hello world has a world ever said hello back I don't think so except for maybe an acid trips or you know, some other kind of drug-induced trip. Anyway, so we're going to do... We're going to call the function yell. And, yeah. So basically how this works, after the constructor, if we type a value here, and then two parentheses, that makes it a function. And, yeah. That's basically it. <laughs> if you have, if you do have any questions, then I say, good sir... How, how else would I explain? This is a function that gets called and stuff executes inside of it. So what we're going to do, console.log. This is an internal function, by the way. Real talk. This is an internal function that will output to a console, which we will get access to in just a moment. My MacBook's going to combust. Anyway, we're, <laughs> we're going to do this dot banana. But ba ba banana. And we're gonna do this dot sour. So this dot banana, comma, this dot sour, end with a semicolon. They say you don't have to in JavaScript, but if you don't, you're gonna get bullied by anyone who does JavaScript. Not really. Ignore me. I'm just being an idiot. So now, how do we access this class? Well, we gotta create a variable. So we're gonna do var. Uh, we're, we can do it a lowercase this time. Thing is equal to capital. Remember the capitals. So. We're going to do new thing, like so. So, the variable thing is lowercase here. You know what? Okay, that's too confusing. So, let me, let me, just, do, let me just do this. We're just going to name it yeet. So, variable yeet is equal to new thing. Now, we're just going to do yeet dot yell, like so. And, uh, yeah, I'll let you take a look at this for a second. Okay, it's been a second. Now, when we launch this, you're going to play test your game after you make sure your plugin's all installed. You're going to get your ears nuked. Even though the music's really good. So, what you're going to do, you're going to press F8 here, and you're going to... Or, or F12, it's up to you. And you can see, here they are. 50 and yes. Those are the values that we set. Alternatively, you can do you can log the entire class by doing console.log eat. Like so. Now when we launch it, you can see we have thing here, and we can see all of the values. This would include functions as well. If you click on proto, uh, you can see the yell object or the yell function that we have here. So 
Congratulations, you have just created your first incredibly boring, yet simplistic, and yet probably really proud of. You should always be really proud of your first stuff. Plugin for Arbiter Maker MZ. If you're using MV, then you're gonna wanna. Well, that's a little bit like obnoxious, but this should work with MV as well. But if you're using an outdated one, it will not, good sir. Because the old versions of MV did not support. Why am I opening Chrome? Did not support. ES6, which is the form of programming that we're using here. If you want to know more about ES6, take a look on Google. There's a lot to it. I definitely do not feel like explaining it. But effectively, it's modern JavaScript, if you will. So, before we go, before we end out this uh, little episode here, I have a little quiz for you guys. Well, not quiz, but I, it's more like a little test thing, I guess. I want you to look up async. So, <laughs> so I want you to look up these three things. I want you to look up consts or constants, if you will, let and async function. Look up those things and I will give you an example of how to do so. Const JavaScript. Yeah, and then you can read uh, W3Schools is a really good place to learn, by the way. So yeah. Go ahead and do that and let me know in the comments what you, or well, don't actually like spoil it in the comments, I guess. We can if you want, I don't really care and I don't think anybody else cares. Nobody's probably going to be doing this, but if you do, well there you go. Yeah, just, just let me know when you've done it and uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.